Hello and welcome to Memoirs of Successful Women. I'm Annie Gibbons, founder and CEO of Women's Biz Global, and I invite you to kick off your heels, get comfortable, and be ready to receive the golden nuggets that are shared as you listen in to candid conversations I have with fascinating women from around the globe. Business leaders, entrepreneurs, humanitarians, athletes, and a whole lot of regular people. They will keep you riveted as they let their guard down and open up on aspects of their business and life journey, how they measure success and what they have learned along the way. My intent is that our conversations will inspire you to embrace opportunities and possibilities beyond the limits of your imagination because I know that this is where we reclaim our power. I want you to reclaim your power, your strength and vulnerability to stand in your truth and propel yourself towards the life that you dream to live. Hello and welcome everybody. It is a delight to be back on our next episode of Memoirs of Successful Women and today I'm going to be introducing you to Kat Valentine. Welcome to our program Kat. Thank you so much. What a gift. (laughs) It's such a delight and I know that we've just we've actually just met online and how wonderful is that that women from around the globe can actually just be connecting finding each other finding areas that would be interesting to meet and share and grow together and we've just found out that we're actually fellow Aussies as well. I'm in Sydney and Kat's in the Gold Coast and uh, yeah so it's just always lovely to have just beautiful unique amazing women on this program and today Kat and I are going to be talking about coaching. Kat has a business which she actually uh, coaches coaches, right? Because coaches, you would think we've got too many coaches, but the view is actually the opposite. And we're going to hear from Kat as to why she believes the world actually needs more coaches and why we actually need to support coaches more. So over to you, Kat, why do uh, we need a business like yours? Okay, so I I started this um, having gone through quite a journey and ended up I ended up coaching. I, I had a career change at fifty one. Um, I had a thirty year marriage and the business that we built together sort of was no more. I was completely lost and floundering, and it was this work that got me through and gave me direction. So then I wanted to share this work with others. So I got the coaching qualifications and started sharing it. Then from there I got training qualifications um, so that I could train people to become coaches. And from there what I've found is that when you are working on your own, you have to wear a lot of hats and you're not really competent in a lot of them. (laughs) That was my journey as well. Even though I knew how to run a business, I didn't know about social media. I didn't know about all of these new apps that you use for business. I didn't know about how to promote myself as the product. Um, So I created Catalyst, which is about supporting coaches to do what it is that they want to do so that they can coach rather than worry about the coaching business. So Mm -hmm. that's sort of how I got to here. Um, So you basically created the business that you would have liked to have accessed, right? Oh, yes, yes. (laughs) (laughs) I can remember sitting there, you know, throwing tantrums almost, like just going, oh, I don't, sitting at the computer, just trying to work out how to upload videos to YouTube. Like we're not talking about really yeah. and just it was just too much and it because I think the overwhelm bucket was so full it mm. didn't take much to just oh this sucks why do I even do this you know and then um little by little you know great that I had kids who could go mum google it and then I'm like I don't want her to google it I'm so sick of googling information about how to do something you know I just want to I just want to coach people I don't want to spend eight hours learning how to do this that's a whole day 
Right. Exactly. I, yeah. And I know I know that feeling and I coach women who have the same sense of <laughs> it really gets you stuck though and it becomes a real barrier because the, the mechanics of the business actually mm. become the overwhelming part when that's right, you just want to go out there and do your business. Coach, mm. so whatever this business today we're talking about, coaching, but it could actually be you could have a dress shop, you could have a hairdressing salon, you could have whatever business you're having and it's the, the business uh, which needs to be run well otherwise you have nothing but it can be the area that gets you unstuck so those of you listening into this conversation and you're having these moments oh my goodness you are not alone this is actually very common and you just started by sharing that you know you had this change at 51 so we're going to have a little unpack here as to where you were before there but also for those ladies who are thinking oh you know I'm too old for this no you're not I have got so many people in my network and I'm sure yours Kat that actually are saying you know what I might be 50 plus but now's my time. I'm going to give this a go. So right. I have one extraordinary woman in the group. Like it's not just coaches. I have yoga teachers, occupational therapists, and this woman is in her 60s and is a maths tutor. And she realizes that there is a real shortage of maths teachers and children are really struggling with maths. Mm-hmm. And so what she wants to do, she's passionate about building an online program that she can support with then group classes starting in Victoria where she's based and all of this is new to her and what is so extraordinary is she'll send through she'll go okay this is my first effort at a video what do you think and then we can chat about that or this is you know and then I also work with my daughter who's my business partner because she's done PR for 15 years and so she helps with copy and um, doing all of that other stuff and you know helps them with long form writing and helps them with this and strategies and all sorts of things and seeing people who are just going i'm going to give this a crack Hmm. it's exciting isn't it i love it even the words you've just used long form writing like some people (laughs) like oh my gosh that's right when you suddenly get into business and you go you've got to know about the the data and then the metadata and the is it short form long form this that whatever you can just go ah I don't know what they're wanting. I don't know why this is important. I just want to write a blog or I just want to create a course. But it is so important. So it is fantastic what you've (laughs) created. I'd love to find a little bit of backstory, though, before you go. Uh Sure. So I'm on the understanding that you started as a science teacher or the area of science. Then I had 30 years before you got to this stage. So yes. What was happening there? <laughs> okay, so I started, um, I got a science degree from school. I went straight into the science degree. And back then, once you got a science degree, I, I was so passionate about it and all these things I was going to do and change the world. But the only job I could get really was um, collecting blood. Oh. Right? There was no, the, the, the sort of, Support for science at that point when I graduated just was in the early 80s. There was just nothing. Um, So I did start a teaching course, but I didn't finish it. Uh, I did meet my husband at uni. He was a year ahead of me and we moved to Sydney and we both found work down there. Uh, And then we came back after we'd had a couple of children came back to Brisbane because we said, why are we doing it down here when all the family's up there? Mm. And we started our own business up here and it was very successful. It was joint replacements, so hips, knees, spinal, and we would uh, educate theatre staff and surgeons in the surgical technique. We'd often have to go into theatre with them and um, kept us busy, was really successful. And then an international um a multinational company bought out the company that we were agents for and they wanted to go direct in every state rather than have agents. So we sold our business to them, moved to Melbourne because my husband then became CEO. And so I then went and did a an MBA and I got a visual arts degree. So I have all these degrees. And then what happened was that he... I guess going back a step, we had big plans. No doubt we 
loved each other. You know, we talked about the future and the this and the that and the kids and what we're going to do. We never talked about feelings. Hmm. And I'd grown up never talking about feelings, as had he. And what was happening for him when we went down there is he really was not happy, but there was no way to really talk about it. So he just kept pushing on and I just kept pushing on. And um, eventually he started with some really unresourceful behaviour. Just with, There was spending that shouldn't have happened and there was all sorts of things. His story, not mine, all right, so I don't want to. But ultimately what happened is that after 30 years I recognised that the marriage was done, mm. you know, that it was just done. And I, like I, sit, I remember I was sitting on the stairs going up to the bedrooms in this beautiful home that we had and I have four adult children, that the oldest, I mean the youngest I think was about 20, 21 then, and they're in that kitchen fighting about who ate the last of the chocolate ice cream or like something really mundane and I'm sitting on the stairs just thinking what now what like mm. there's nothing now what and I went upstairs and sort of the and the despair was huge and then you know it became obvious we needed to sell the house we needed to do a couple of things and unpack everything and basically I just went into this hole where I didn't I didn't want to kill myself I just didn't want to live mm. so I would go to bed every night just praying that I wouldn't wake up in the morning and then I would and then it'd be like oh now what like oh, now what now and then I'd start crying because I go I don't know what to do I, it was so terrifying and overwhelming um and then I found like this inner work and I, I went to a few courses and I started to get well and I started to heal. And then I went to more courses and um, there was deep, profound change at a really deep unconscious level. And I loved this work and it gave me my life back. And then that's when I became really passionate about being a coach and sharing this work with other people who felt really lost and disconnected. So that's how all of this started. And then, mm -hmm. as we talked about, I was there in this, now what? Now <laughs> what? Now that's what? very different to selling surgical instruments and going to <laughs> theatres and practices. So he, even those listening in who are going, well, Kat's got an MBA and she's got this yeah, and that. Didn't help. Still doesn't necessarily help. And that's a weird thing to sort of get your head around. You go, I'm a smart person. I'm capable. I've done all these things, but not in this specific area of expertise. So it can and seriously pull the rug out from anyone. 100%. And, yeah, an MBA and a science degree and even a visual arts degree do not help you upload videos to YouTube. Right? <laughs> that's so true. They don't help you with social media strategy. Like all of this stuff was completely foreign to me. And then Facebook ads don't even get me started, right? It was like. Particularly because YouTube says create. It doesn't say upload. It says create. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just unpacking my process here as we're talking. Right. Going, it could be tricky if you didn't know that. Oh, um, I was just in a world of overwhelm, like honestly. And I would just put my head down, and I and like, my kids were gorgeous, but they couldn't help. No, I mean they couldn't. Like, yeah, they could do it for me, but then I didn't know how to do it. All right, mm -hmm. and I'd had someone create my website and stuff, and then went MIA. So I didn't even know what the back end of my website was or how to. It was just, you know. <laughs> I know. And those sorts of things happen. You know, I've got people who go, yeah, I can't change anything on my website because my web person's gone. Like, what does that mean? Gone where? Gone yeah. missing. Yeah. And then they're, therefore they're stuck. They've got all their stuff, the whole idea of doing it again, but it's already there, but they can't change anything. Like there's so many zillion pieces of right. doing it. So and you did all the healing, inner healing work and you got yourself mm. well, which Fantastic. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Better than seeing a woman 
thriving. Yeah. Uh, and then you then went through the roller coaster ride of, oh my gosh, how does this all work? And then realized at some stage, what did you realize this was a different arm of your business? Or did you actually find other coaches that you met who are also just like, ah, how does this all work? Well, what that- happened, yeah, I guess what happened from there, from being a coach, what I did was then I did get qualifications to train people as coaches. Mm-hmm. So, and so I have a couple of like train the trainer qualifications and I have worked in a whole lot of different modalities of coaching. So I really armed myself, I guess, to then train people to be coaches. And it was in that while I would still coach them one on one after they'd succeeded in getting their qualifications, you know, with their inner work. I mean, I still have an inner work coach because guess what, you know. You always need it. (laughs) (laughs) And what I discovered, though, was a lot of the work that we were talking about was things like how do I get clients? Hmm. Like how do I create a program? What should I charge? Um, Where do I look? How do I, you know, all all of that. And every time they said it, I felt this, oh, I know this feeling. I know this feeling. I know this. And so from there what happened was I thought, well, rather than just put out spot fires for people who I'm working with, why don't I just create a program where I can Mm. bring all these people together? Yes. And so it actually is better for everyone because people will ask questions that you haven't thought to ask um there's there's this beautiful peer support one of the things that happen in the first session is that we get people to really talk about why they're doing it who they want to serve and how they want to serve them and what's so beautiful in every time i look at every, all of them i say look at you all the world needs all of you and not one of you is in competition with the other mm, exactly. you know they we need you all. And so what's so beautiful there is that that just takes away any of that sense of, well, you know, everyone works at their own pace. Everyone's got their own thing. And it becomes really supportive hmm. so that they do put their videos in the forum or they put their long copy in and go, guys, what do you think of this? Or, you know, so that it's supportive. Hmm. They're not <laughs> doing it on their own. And that you're not doing it alone. And I think that's the next point that I want to raise with you, that a lot of the world of coaching is solo, right? So you're giving, you're giving, you're giving. You love what you're doing. You want to share your expertise. But most of the day you're actually uh, giving out of yourself or alone. You're creating courses, Mm -hmm. working on your content, all this sort Mm -hmm. of thing. So it can Mm -hmm. feel very lonely. It is. And you think that that what you're going through, it's only you. Yes. And it's so not true. Right? Mm-hmm. It's so not true. Everyone is really going through the same stuff. You know, that we, we, we come armed with all this beautiful information and we've, we've, we've had, in my experience, the best coaches are the ones who've done the work themselves. All right, so mm-hmm. you've come to a program where you've done the processes and you've worked with someone to do the processes and your life has changed and you see how it can influence others and you have this almost evangelical, you know, think that everyone should know this, you know, and then you've got to pull it back and go, okay, well, yeah, everyone should, but in reality, who am I going to be able to help? Hmm. And, and just get that sort of structure and support to just work with your crew, you know, work with the people that you can truly speak to and help. Hmm. Hmm. Mm. Great advice. I've seen it written by you that you believe EQ is more important than IQ. Yeah. All right. So, I, you know, having been someone who really, oh, look, I'm going to put it out there. I was really proud of my IQ, all right? I know, you know, the science degree, the MBA with frigging high distinctions everywhere. I was like, oh, I am so, you know. I'm really, really proud of this. Mm. And I'm not dismissing that it's important. But what I've discovered is that without understanding how our emotions and feelings work, this really doesn't Mm. operate efficiently. You know, it doesn't matter how smart I think I am. If Mm. I'm solely relying on the stories that my mind tells me, 
I don't do that well, you know, as I've discovered. It's that understanding that we are feeling machines. Everything mm -hmm. we do, everything we do is to either get a feeling or avoid a feeling. And it's in both of those things that we can do have really dangerous, unresourceful behaviour. Mm. You know, speaking as, as a mum who has had a child who was a homeless meth addict, right, people, fortunately, he's, he's great. Good. You know, that was it, right? But it might not have ended the way it did. Like people die trying to avoid feelings. Yeah. And for me, if everyone in the world understood that rather than fear the feelings, to actually listen to the feelings and go, okay, what is my body trying to tell me? Because all feelings are a signposts mm. to what your head says is going on around you. All right? So if you're angry, okay, it's because you feel a boundary's been breached. Okay, mm. great. Let's have a look at that. Right? <laughs> Rather than just react, has it actually been breached or is this making up a story, you know? And you know if you drop into your body what the truth of the situation is. But so often what happens is that we try to ignore what our body's telling us and mm. just let the mind run and react rather than stop. So, you know, and frustration or, you know, is a sign that we want things to be different to how they are. Mm. Okay. Sure, but if we don't do anything about it, it's a bit of insanity just staying frustrated. Like either we can change what it is or we can't. It's exhausting. <laughs> it's exhausting, right? Like there are so many things and I just think if we all truly understood what the emotions were, I mean, there's a whole buffet of emotions and we are meant to feel all of them. We're just meant to understand what it is about that image, what, what it's trying to tell us. Mm. And I think there's a really, really great phrase to use, a buffet of emotions that you've got to know. <laughs> I, think, I think traditionally, you know, we, we just side with the ones that we like, you know, yeah. obviously love, joy, you know, you're feeling, you're feeling great. If it's a positive emotion, love it. If it's yeah. a negative emotion, avoid uh, it. I don't <laughs> like it. It makes yeah. me feel uncomfortable. I don't know what to do with it. Mm, All right? I don't really want to unpack the mm. cause of it, you know, yeah. what's, what's why it's ticking my buttons. Whereas that's absolutely true. You know, in my coaching work, I tell people you've got to frenemy it, right? You've got to get it up front. You've got to go and say, hello, you. I need to learn about you because I need to yeah. take your sting away. And I also yeah. need to know when you show up, why you show up, what's driving you, all of those points. In fact, I need to know more than all the love bomb ones that just sort of make me feel all, you know, great because they are your truth, aren't they? They're actually, 100%. you know, your mind can kind of give you these clouded <laughs> views on, oh, it's fine, but your deep feelings, which are always just at the surface, uh, hmm. actually are giving you that the real story. Oh, absolutely. And the thing is when you try to push them down, you're actually staying at the effect of yes. the emotion. Mm. Right, because you're trying to avoid it, and the harder we try to avoid it, the more actually it's impacting on our lives. Good point. So that if you actually look at it and go, yeah, this really sucks. I don't want to be here. I don't want to feel this. What is this actually about? What you're actually doing is you're going back to cause and taking charge of your life and going, it is what it is. So what can I do? Not oh well, it is what it is. What can I do? You know, push it down, <laughs> keep going. Mm -hmm. No, <laughs> yeah, it's. I mean, they're there. Where the, the body doesn't lie. Mm. I, I grew up being told that feelings weren't facts, mm. right? And that can, be, and I know that there's a lot of twelve step processes, you know, programs that say feelings aren't facts. Mm. And I understand from their point of view because if you're going through withdrawal, you know, if yeah. your body's, you, you don't go back. Like that's not the points. But for me. The feelings are fact. I can tell you in my body exactly where I'm feeling it and mm. I can even tell you if it's got a shape or colour. You know, it's this red hot. This. What's not true is the story that created it. The mm. stories are not fact at all, right? My mind can 
can oh, well, it can it create is. anything and it can be very biased and it can be distorted over the years uh right. there's just so much so much happening there in those brains let's right. <laughs> so if the body is keeping score well, well let's listen right yeah. yeah yeah so that's that's what i mean when i say eq is more important than iq Mm. No, I think that's been a fantastic conversation and one that I'm sure that our listeners are just like, yeah, that is absolutely true. You know, particularly those of us who have been more sort of, you know, academic or proud of, you know, the mm. fact that we, we were either, you know, very smart or in an opportunity class or actually did really great at uni. And you get a lot of affirmation from that, a lot of self-worth from that. And I agree with you. That doesn't mean that it's not fantastic. It's freaking awesome, right? As a woman with three degrees, I'm certainly proud of them. It took yeah. me a lot of time. Hard blood, sweat, and tears to actually do that, particularly around five children. Uh, but it's not your essence. It's not who you are. It's not necessarily going to equip you to, you know, be a happy, healthy adult to have to leave a positive footprint on the world. But it certainly can give you opportunities to mm. be able to use, um, you know, your your value in certain domains. But it certainly mm. doesn't doesn't always um, help you be balanced in fact sometimes it can really undo you because a lot of the, a lot of life is social right it's actually connecting it's being able to get on with other people it's being able to see things beneath between the lines uh, it is a lot of um, yeah really um, savvy communication skills I believe anyway oh I 100% agree as well and for me with my mind because I was so you know enamored with it that what it led to was trying to micromanage everything, mm. right? Because I just knew, well, my mind knew, my mind knew that if I had this happen and this happen and this happen, well, then we'd have this happen. And and what it led to was more and more and more micromanaging, which basically then I think for me was this fear that if I wasn't in control, then something disastrous would happen. <laughs> Exactly. The world will fall down. And I tell you what, so many people listening in will be going, yeah, that's exactly how I feel. I feel like the world will fall down because that's the confidence that you have. You have the confidence because you go, because I'm in control. Now, when yeah. you start having these conversations, you go, don't always rely on your mind, actually rely on your gut, your feelings, your this, mm -hmm. your that. Those people will be going, oh, that's risky. Mm -hmm right very very risky uh and so we understand you and this takes oh. a lot of time to this doesn't just suddenly yeah. go all oh, right now i'm going to just start trusting my feelings more and actually get balanced and and explore more it's certainly not going to happen overnight i'm assuming this journey took a very long time for you <laughs> it did and even now like although even now you know there will be times where i'll this will be running and it might take me a couple of days or something and then i'll go oh hang on Woo, 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 no, 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 no. That's not what we do here because it's sending me on this spiral of um, like this this fear-based spiral where I, I've got to do this and I have to do this and I have to, I have to, and I have to make sure that this happens and then this happens. And look, we are co-creating our existence with 8 billion other people. Mm -hmm. Stop's not going to go my way, you know. <laughs> a lot of the time. What a shame. What a shame. It's not always going to go your way. I know. It's annoying, isn't it? And I what can't control it? that. I can't control it. So being able to step back and go, okay, well, this is what I want to happen and these are the steps that I'm going to take. But then accepting that the outcome is going to be an adventure that I don't, I don't know what the outcome is going to be. I yeah. certainly know what I want it to be. But I just have to accept the adventure as it comes, you know, oh. that it's going to be. I'm all into that. So there's hope, those of you listening in. I'm just so I'm the opposite side. I'm just like can't get more enough adventure, you know. I just love the <laughs> I've personally jumped off the cliff and I'm just swimming down some little rapid because I'm yeah. like, oh, I wonder where this is going to take me. But you've got to be brave and bold and you've got to have gone through a lot of work to get yeah. to that stage. So if some of you go, oh, yeah, I'd like to be there, has it? It actually requires you doing all the mini, mini, mini pushes and just bringing yourself back, um, you know, realizing acknowledging oh my mind's overthinking this it's it's mm -hmm. it's brought in at my fear trigger um why all those sorts of things so i love this conversation and i love that you're now working with many women who are you know 40 50 plus who are who are given now a safe environment to actually go you know what you've got so much to offer you you know mm -hmm. many many women millions mm -hmm. of women are actually mm -hmm. going through 
that same situation, that they've studied one course, whether they loved it or didn't or were made to do it, um, if depending on how old they were, like me. Um, and so, or, um, you know, highs and lows of marriages and relationships, self-sacrificing for children, which we all love them, but we do over-self-sacrifice. Yeah, right? mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, my gosh, we're the ultimate soldiers. Yeah. Um, and then you suddenly get to a stage and go, oh, who am I? What, what do I have to offer? And I love the fact that you, you'll you agree with me that everyone has a bit of a genius zone in them. Everyone's got something that they go, you know what, I'm really good at it. I love it. I could even then learn to teach it, coach it, bring that wisdom to someone else. And then those people need support like what we're all about offering here today, right? Um, everyone who has gone through a dark night of the soul Hmm. Which most of us do at some stage in our life, whether old, young, whatever. Everyone who has gone through something like that has something to offer because hmm. so often there are experts who haven't walked the walk but they'll tell you what you should do. Having never been prepared to walk the walk, they don't want to take the chance. They don't want to do, but, oh, I can tell you what you should do, right? <laughs> There's so much more um, wisdom that comes from people We've walked it. So true. Right? And you just go, yeah, for me, I'm more inclined to listen to that person because I go, you have wisdom that no one else can have because they haven't walked that journey. Right? Mm. So I, go, I want to hear from you. Mm. What have you got that you can share with me? You know? And so, yeah, so they're the people that I just think their voices need to be heard. Yeah. I totally agree. And there's so many, so many people out there needing coaches and needing to align. They'll find their person, right? So mm -hmm. a lot of it, yes, you need to help set people up that they need to know, you know, who they are, have clarity in their service offering, what problem do you solve and all of the business 101. But you also, I agree with you that there's enough business to go around that, that people will then be attracted to specific people because of their lived experience, mm -hmm. because of their skills and expertise. And mm -hmm. that's a great thing. And you will find Find your people if you are, you know, positioned in that niche really, really clearly. Uh, those people will find you. So um, Absolutely. Right. And I feel what we, you see the figures being bandied around all the time now, how people have got there's more anxiety, there's more depression, there's more this, there's more that, there's more disconnection, there's more, you know, social anxiety. Like there's so much that's happening where where EQ, I think, is really being diluted and diminished. And so, you know, I guess for me, the difference between coaching, we need psychologists and counsellors and psychiatrists and we 100%, like what they do is way outside my scope of practice, right? Mm -hmm. But they work with people who aren't functioning and yes. help them to function. Whereas a coach works with someone who's functioning. They might have a lot of stuff in their lives where that be bubbling below the surface that is really traumatic for them, but they're functioning. Yes. They want to do more than function. Yes. So you want to be coaches. You want to be thriving, not surviving, right? You know, right. when you're going through the survival stage, yeah, you need expert, you know, attention and you should mm. go and get it real fast. Yeah. <laughs> You yeah. can get a really, you know, make it your number one priority. But that's yeah. it. You actually, when you're a coach, you want to be working with other people who are healthy and they go, I want to go to thriving. I want to be nailing it. I want to be comfortable to just jump off that next little little cliff and feel comfortable that I will know how, that I'll be ready to adapt and to continue stretching and growing. Uh, yeah. It is a good place to be. So. so much so, right? Yeah, and yeah, sure, that these are people who go, I don't know why I always make these mistakes in relationships or I don't know why I'm sabotaging my efforts to get fit or I don't know why. But they've got, they got stuff, right? There's yeah. stuff, but it's not stuff, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's not massive stuff that needs, uh, yes, urgent attention, deep weeding, we might call, or def definitely some um, medication, maybe even as well. Uh, mm -hmm. We just want to be able to just help you along your way. So mm -hmm. I love what you're doing. I think it's absolutely fantastic. How is everyone going to find you? I've got it on my scrolling screen, but for those of you who are just listening in on the audio stream, how do they find you, Kat? Okay, so they can find me at catvalentine.com.au or I am on Insta, Cat Valentine underscore Catalyst, because Catalyst is the name of my program. On LinkedIn, it's the same. 
Um, so yes, please reach out. I would love to work with you if you want to become a coach or if you are a coach and you want to just now get out there and help the people you want to help, please reach out. Yeah. Fantastic. Mm. Thanks so much for being on my program today. I've really enjoyed our conversation. Oh, so have I, Annie. Thank you so much. What a treat. Thanks so much for tuning in to this episode of Memoirs of Successful Women. I'm Annie Gibbons, founder and CEO of Women's Biz Global. And if you would like to fast track your future success, hop on over to womensbizglobal.com. Find out about all things Women's Biz and most importantly, take the opportunity to have a free trial of Women's Biz Tribe. I look forward to seeing you online very soon. Until next episode, bye for now.